Hello, welcome to Dark Histories Yesterday Today for the 12th of March. Today we're rummaging through the Leeds Times from 1842. Narrow Escape As Mr G Lansbury, Baker, was going to Linsdale with his horse and cart, it came in contact with the post. The horse and cart and Mr Lansbury, with his bread, were overturned into the canal. We're happy to say that he got safe out without much damage and the fish had a nice treat with the loaves. Wasn't that lovely to start off with? A shocking accident, but, you know, at least the fish got some bread. Now, the next story pushes the boundary of what surely what is actually believable honest journalism. Vegetation Extraordinary The Courier de la Garande asserts that About 18 months ago, a young man in eating an apple got one of the pips fixed in his decayed tooth, which occasioned him great pain and defied extraction withstanding the use of all manner of toothpicks. At length, the pip, by dint of pushing, was driven down below the tooth into the gum and no more pain was felt. Six weeks ago, however, a swelling was perceived in the gum and ultimately an abscess was formed. The medical men examined it and found that the pip had begun to germinate. The young man, adds the courier, is in the habit of keeping cotton wool in his teeth and this is supposed to have hastened vegetation. This remarkable phenomenon is still in his mouth. That surely can't be true, right? I mean, even if it were true, it wouldn't... Surely they wouldn't leave it in his mouth. The guy's basically got an apple tree growing out of his face. But... There's so much news that you can doubt from these kind of Victorian papers. So when you read stories that are bizarre and 100% fact and bizarre and just 100% false, the lines blur a little bit too much, but surely that can't be true. In terms of American news, when you go back to this age, there's not really anything that's very solid and it's mostly snippets of sort of small information or little facts and figures, bits of data here and there. And it's usually pulled with it with zero or very little context. And here's an example that I found from this paper that absolutely blew my mind, though. There are 4,306 criminals confined in the 15 state penitentiaries throughout America. In nine of these institutions... There is an actual gain from convict labour of $63,638,053 above their expenses. So that's it, that's all you get, it's just this little snippet. But $63 million in 1842 is the equivalent of $1.8 billion today. That's, again, that's just madness, isn't it? The start of the prison industry I guess and you can see why it took off with that much profit Warning to Whiskerless Whites On Monday at Marlborough Street Police Office a simple lad of 19 complained to Mr Maltby of a grievous injury inflicted upon him by a friend The youth removed a handkerchief from his face and showed a blistered chin and lip and blistered cheeks covered with chicken fat as an ointment The poor fellow presented a frightful and yet ludicrous appearance. His friend, he said, possessed luxuriant whiskers, mustachios and chin tuft, all of which the complainant coveted. He therefore asked him how he had come by them and was informed that they were the result of French whisker salve, to which the great majority of the Sibthorpe tribe were indebted for their peculiar ferocity of fizz. A pot of this salve was obligingly presented to the barefaced youngster and plentifully applied on retiring to rest. In the morning, the poor victim awoke in great pain with his face in a woeful plight, the pot having been maliciously filled with blister salve. The only consolation which Mr Maltby could give him was a judicial opinion that he was a great simpleton. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure that's really useful, that that piece of... uh, Judicial opinion. I like the fact that, um, you know, he possessed luxuriant whiskers, mustachios and chin tuft and he wondered where he came by it rather than just the fact that he grew them. Anyway, I'll leave you with this fine proverb today taken from a section of the paper headed Odd Bits 
And if you can work out what it means, then good luck to you. Friendship is a silent gentleman that makes no parade. The true heart dances on hornpipes on the tongue. And on that note, that was yesterday. This is today. Thanks for listening.